you mentioned kick, kicking was your strength. Like, what was what was one of your way, like one of your tactics and methods to uh, keep sharpening that skill? Just practice. Like, I'm even now that I'm finished, and I know that you know, obviously, I w- own kicking dynamics and and things, but I'm constantly touching the football. Um, you know, walking down the street, going for walks. I'm still carrying a football, kicking it to myself inside. Um, you know, obviously, try not to break things like I probably did as a junior in mum's and dad's house. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, constantly just touching the ball and, and working on your craft. You can't work on your craft a- enough. Um, you know, you can always improve. You can always develop. And, and you, you know, you take a leaf out of, you know, other sports and you're watching these superstars like, you know, LeBron James, who's regarded as one of the best, you know, players ever to play the game in NBA and he's still working on his craft in the off season. Um, and that's why they're yeah. so good is because, you know, they're still working on things even um, after being in the system so for so long. I have twins, 14 year olds that have, that are challenged by their disability um, coordination development disorder, where I have had to create a new ways of learning, teaching the skills of football and really focusing on their fitness. And then it goes on to say, um, focus on their fitness and strengthening to keep them at their top level to keep up with their age group and division. Um, do you have any programs that can assist with their development uh, of skills? A- absolutely. And, and you know, we've had a number of players like that. And, and I guess the, the key for that one is, is trying to, um, you know, which is our philosophy anyway, is, is try to simplify the process as, as much as possible, but then also have fun, um, fun doing it doing it as well you've got to be enjoying um, you know what they do but by simplifying the process and making the the technique um, as easy for them to understand and easy for them to do then you know they gain that sort of real confidence out of it and then once a player then starts to get confidence it's you know anything sort of you know can happen from there and we see you know I get a number of feedback from parents saying how much you know not only in the football field but then also out in the you know life as well how much you know their their kid just seems to be so much more confident um, around things so um, absolutely we we definitely deal um, with all sorts of you know players whether you know they have disabilities whether they don't any ages any gender um, you know we we work with them all What's your thoughts on the best kicking techniques for teaching kicking fundamentals while using the game's approach to kids? Yeah, and I guess this is about our whole uh, sort of philosophy and, you know, what we sort of go by at Kicking Dynamics is is simplify the process. So when we sort of look at the fundamentals is don't overcomplicate the process. You know, there are, there are some coaches out there and, I, you know, I listen to a lot of, you know, community coaches and all that as well telling players on, you know, things that they should be looking for or doing it in the kick. And, you know, after all the experience that we've sort of had, um, those areas don't actually have a massive impact with the actual kick and, and how the kick actually goes. So we try and eliminate those because if you then have less things to, to focus on, the players mm. then know that it's easier to do. Um, they can then concentrate on them as well because there's less things to do then that means they're more likely to do it, which then that consistency comes into it. And then that's going to then help in the game. So, you know, we're a big believer of working on our fundamentals first and making sure we get that right. And then once we start doing that, then start working with the game and the pressured situations. In terms of pass to the AFL or rejoining an academy, what advice would you give to someone who played in the Swans Academy till the age of 15, but then left due to lack of size and strength and love for AFL? And then he's followed on to say who has now put on muscle mass and improved skills to a new level whilst also played high level of other sports since? Yeah, and great question, um, Ollie, and um, thanks for sort of tuning in. What I would sort of suggest is is obviously you've worked on some of your, I guess, um, areas that you sort of need to and improving your skill level and also the, the muscle mass is, is just keep at it and, and just keep working on your strengths. Um, you've still obviously got time um, being at 15 years of age. Nobody gets drafted at 15. So there's still plenty of time left. So if you just keep working and keep um, improving and, and, and working on your strengths and playing good football, that's you can't be playing good football. Um, obviously, it comes with preparation. Absolutely, but play good, consistent football, and then that's where you know things will start to get noticed um, a little bit more. And and you know things like the Swans Academy, Giants Academy, all these people out there have different scouts and different reporting systems. So if you're playing really good football, 
um, you're, you're, you will get noticed um, in, in the long run. Um, but yeah, just work hard and, and keep working on the things that you're good at and, and keep working on things that you also need to improve too. You, you may have answered this one already with Lucas, but um, if there's anything you want to add to it, I find it difficult to get distance slash power if my set routine is straight, like you were talking about before. How do you get power without wheeling around to the side? Yeah, and, and that's a great question, and we get that you know quite a quite a bit as well in terms of that power, in terms of that distance. It may not be a set shot, but that's a you know that power and distance is a is a big question that we get asked. And momentum, yeah, through the ball. Um, so everything going towards the target because you've got momentum through the ball, you are going to get that impact. There's probably no question that you probably do generate a little, little bit more power from going out to the side. But what you do do is you decrease the accuracy because there are extra variables that you get you have to get right. So whenever you then increase these variables under pressure in a game situation, your percentage of getting it right lowers. So my then question to players is, you know, we can work on getting that extra distance, but if if it means then compromising your accuracy as well, which would you rather? Would you rather hit four out of 10 and kick 50 metres or would you rather kick seven or eight out of 10 and, and kick 47 and 48 metres? You know, it's only a couple of metres different.